next lesson, we're going to be talking about graphing exponential functions. Um, an exponential function I want to graph is the function f of x equals 2 to the x. So I'm going to make a nice little table. And my instructions say I want to keep my domain from negative 4 to 4. So that means negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what we're actually finding here is um, 2 to the negative 4, 2 to the negative 3, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4th, and so forth. All right. Now, I'm going to start in the middle here because I know anything to the 0 power is just giving me 1. 2 to the 1st power is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. We're actually multiplying by 2 each time. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Now, conversely, when we go, if we look backwards, we could divide by 2. 8, 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. 1 half divided by 2 is 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and 1 sixteenth. This is actually another way to prove that negative exponents give me fractions. Pretty nifty. Just wanted to throw that in there. All right, I'm going to plot these points onto my graph. 2 would give me 4, 3 would give me 8, 4 would be way off the page, so it really doesn't matter. Negative 1 gives me half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, these fractions get smaller and smaller and smaller, but do they ever actually become 0 or become less than 0? No. So we end up with this, oh gosh, what's that called when we have that? Um, isn't that something like an asymptote? It is. So let's think about what's happening as x gets really small, as x approaches negative infinity. What is our graph doing? While our function is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, it actually approaches 0 but never actually touches it. That is called a horizontal asymptote. Now, what we're going to do is on the same graph, we are going to graph a few others and think about what's going to happen. g of x, if I took each of those x values, I mean the y values, and multiplied by one fourth, what would happen to my graph? So um, it's, I said to write a table, but I'm going to actually just show you how you could do it by hand. So one fourth of 2 to the x. Well, this y value is 8. One-fourth of that would give me 2. One-fourth of 4 would give me 1. One-fourth of 2 would give me a half. One-fourth of 1 would give me one-fourth. And these would just be smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, this one would have been 16. One-fourth of that is 4. So what it does is it kind of flattens out my graph a little bit. So this is the graph 1 fourth of 2 to the x. I should have marked my original. This is uh, 2 to the x. Now the next one that I'm asked to graph is negative 2 to the x. So I'm taking this uh, parent function and I'm going to make everything negative. What do we know from our rules about what that does to a graph? Well, I hope you remember it's going to flip it. So this would be negative 2 to the x. Now, the last one is negative 1 half of 2 to the x. So what that tells me to do is for each of those values, not only am I flipping it, but I'm taking half of each. So instead of 8, that would be at 4. That would be 
two, one, half, and so forth. So again, it kind of squishes it. That would be negative one half of two to the x. So the leading coefficient, um, negatives flip it. Um, what else happens? Um, it affects whether it's um, compressed or normal. It's also affecting the y-intercept. It's affecting a lot. Um, so let's actually go into a little bit more detail. Okay. This is called an exponential function. An exponential function always has the exponent is where the variable is. Your exponent is the variable. Okay. How do you find the y-intercept of this function? Well, any y-intercept, we let x equal 0. So let's see what happens. f of 0. a times b to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is always 1. So it's always going to be that a. It's always going to be my leading coefficient. Now, I want you to think about why is there a horizontal asymptote in only one direction? Well, only one direction has negative exponents. If I had positive exponents, I'm going to just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It'll never start shrinking like that. Now, uh, the next one, how do we find x-intercepts of this function? Well, we would let y be 0. Um, 0 equals a times b to the x, divide by a. Is there any exponent I can plug in there that would give me 0? No way. So, to make an easy sketch of any function, the easiest x-coordinates to work with are 1, 0, and negative 1. Um, when I plug in negative 1 into this function, that'd be a times b to the negative 1, or a over b. When I plug in 0, I'll just get a back. When I plug in 1, I'll get a times b. Makes it super, super easy. And then we just plot the points. That really is the easiest way to do it, is to make a little table and then plot your points. So gosh, I don't even know if we really need to do all these, but we will. Negative 1, 0, and 1. This really makes it the easiest. So 1 half of 3 to the negative 1. Well, 3 to the negative 1, that's 1 third. So that ends up giving me 1 sixth. 1 half of 3 to the 0. It's just going to give me 1 half. 1 half of 3 to the 1. It's going to give me 3 halves. So I know it's going to get really close to that x-axis down here. And I know it's not going up very fast, huh? Uh, the next one to be 9 divided by 2. That's 4.5. So we're going to get this nice little curve. It's kind of more flat than some of the parent ones, but it's still really easy to draw.